Hi guys, I hope you all are doing well, staying safe, staying in and wearing your mask. Alt Balaji has always stood in solidarity with LGBTQIA plus community by bringing phenomenal stories on their platform. Stories in regards with LGBTQIA community are always in scare, not just in India, but around the world. After the stupendous success of Romel and Juyal, the married woman, the digital platform has recently launched their next same-sex relationship drama, His Story. Well, hello there. My name is Tushar Tyagi, and I'm your host for today. I will be hosting a fantastic panel with fantastic panelists, and we are going to discuss about a very important topic, same-sex relationship still a taboo acceptance by the society and family at large. My interest of telling stories about marginalized communities brought me on this very panel, and I'm going to invite my next amazing batch of panelists. First, I would like to invite the talented actors of Alt Balaji Urban Relationship Drama, His Story, Satyadeep Mishra, Priyamani Raj, and Mrinal Dhan. Can we have them on the virtual stage, please? Hello. Hi, hi, hi how are you, Pramani? Hi, hi, hi. Satyadeep. Well, I would like hi, to start hi. with congratulating you two. I saw, I like binge watch his story and I literally adore and I really like how you guys have performed all the important, you know, topics that you guys have raised. So congratulations on that. Thank you. Thank you. Next, I would like to invite these two lovely women who are hell bent on changing the world at a time. Rama Sarode and Raga Olga de Salva. Welcome to the panel. Hello, good evening. Thank you. Good evening, how are you guys doing? Very well. Wonderful to be here, thank you. Welcome. Well, let's start today's session by the meaning of marriage. Well, I'm not married yet, so I'll have to read it off my script. They say uh, that the marriage is the legal union of men and women and as husband, as wife, the most important institution of human society on which the backbone of human civilization is resting for centuries. Well, that's deep and heavy, but I definitely do know that some of the marriages can, we have Mrinal. Hi Mrinal, welcome on uh, the panel. So yeah, I'll, ca I'll carry on. Some of the marriages can break apart uh, when infidelity takes the main stage, center stage in a relationship and dynamic changes if the relationship, the reason for infidelity is the same sex relationship of one of the partners. Well, today we are here to discuss about taboos on same, se same sex relationship that still persist in India, acceptance by the family, and also reacting to the instances when, you know, the, the these type of stuff that happens in somebody else's family versus our own. Well, Priyamani, I would like to come uh, to you first, or rather all the actors, Satyadeep and Manal, tell me guys, uh, what were your first reactions when you read the script? Satyadeep, do you wanna go first? Um, well, I was uh, narrated the story briefly over a phone call uh, by the creative director of the show and I did find it interesting, but I also asked them for some scenes because, you know, it, it's always a very different experience reading some material on your own and listening to it from somebody else. Um, and I just wanted to get a sense of how they would be treating some key moments in the show. Um, and and it, was an, it was an interesting story. It was, uh, uh, it was a story which obviously dealt with this uh, situation between, you know, the characters played by the three of us on the show. But it also had a subtext. It also had uh, parallel tracks about neighbors and friends and their reaction to what's going on in our lives. So, um, so yeah, it, it was very interesting. I basically needed some sort of comfort from the makers of the show as to how, and get a sense from them as to how they wanted to treat the show. And I think once I'd met with uh, Tandir and, and Prashant uh, and sort of got that comfort, I was very happy to be part of this. What about you, Mrinal? Uh, so same, as uh, Satyadeep said, you, you know, it was very important for me to understand how it's being done. 
and i was more concerned about the human side of it what's the story what they're trying to say and how they're trying to say it so that came in after you know a good narration and after i read some of it also so it was very impo- important for me how they're trying to you know uh, represent it so to say or um, again what are the aesthetics with which they're trying to do this and you know what exactly the story and the characters are as they go along in the story so yes um, i think they were also set out to make something very um, they were sensitive to it you know so they were set out to make something nice and once um, i read and once i sat down with them i think um, yeah i was uh, i was pretty sure it's going the right direction uh, sure. so yes it was that for me that's wonderful to hear what about you uh, pimani oh uh, well um i was the first person to be on board this project much before i think satyadeep and runal were on board and uh, well initially before i was told the story the first thing i asked them was uh, how big will my contribution be to such a story because obviously um it was based on the same sex re- it is based on the same sex relationship so i didn't know how big or how much my contribution would be so i was told to listen to the story first and then take a decision which i did and for thank god that i took the right decision and i decided to be on board this fantastic project because i've never done anything like this in my entire career and uh, i'm a big supporter of the lgbtq community and the trans community and so I, there is a tick off there is a follow up question i'm a filmmaker so i have lot of uh, you know questions from filmmakers mind tell me one thing how much of a research did you like have to go back and do on your own and how much you learned from like just being uh, you know on the show and uh, during the what was your research process like i mean uh, uh, for me uh, I, i you know i'm i'm a straight man playing a gay character But that, but that's the that's where it starts off in the head and when you read the material and obviously uh, you I, i'm going to sort of respond to it through sort of my my head and my emotions etc but you know I, the, the thing is that one has uh, a lot of gay friends you know it's uh, you know you, you've seen you've seen stuff play out in front of you but 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 still the sort of research is sort of more observational as far as i'm concerned to like try and put yourself in the head space of a person who you think is going to be caught in a similar situation where he has this wife and kids and a family on one side and you know he's got this lover on the other and it's 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 a very sort of uh what he gets from one relationship is very different from what he gets to from the other relationship but both the relationships mean a lot to him so i think th- that is the sort of research and homework that i felt that i needed to do to play kunal what about you mrinal uh so uh for me to begin with it was a i think conscious effort once i sat down with you know spoke uh, to the makers also to um keep it normal not make it effeminate uh, in any way and what was important for me was to understand the, the inner world of living in a society where you have to hide and you know you not come out and you know not be yourself to your parents your friends yeah. so i mean we all have friends who are gay and we've spoken to them we've i mean i've been fortunate to have and i've always always heard their story and i even went back to a few of them to just you know talk and understand and just hear them out more uh, more so so usme wahi like you know people like kunal come out you know who are just like cannot even think of it and people like preet also who are just like living it like they don't give a damn about people so um it was very interesting to you know see the darker stories or the or the crazy times they've gone through with with families and you know how uh, suicidal also some of them have been so um yeah just to understand the inner world was 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 what was important to me priyamani i'll come to you next uh you guys have done a phenomenal job my next question is uh for uh rama ji you've you're a very well known family uh, advocate tell us about your views on marriage in india and do they fall apart because of you know when uh, ones um, identify post marriage about their sexual orientation yeah sure uh, let me first start by congratulating for taking up such a uh, topic for a, a serial i think it's most important that we start talking about it 
uh, well, are they marriages that fall apart because of this? Yes, uh, this is uh, maybe same sex relation is not such a common uh, thing in terms of talking about it when it comes to divorces. Uh, but having a relation outside marriage, I don't want to call it infidelity because I don't want to value judge anybody because of this. Uh, so yeah, that's one of the commonest grounds I have, uh, you know, come across when there are couples who come to me um, uh, saying that this is the reason why they want to uh, fall apart. apart. Now, uh, have I come across cases where there are, uh, you know, a person is married, I mean, uh, uh, say a man is married to a, a woman and he is uh, in a same-sex relationship. Yes, I have also worked with that community, right? And so I have seen a lot of them who have to marry because of the pressures of society. They have to marry because of the pressures of family and they're not happy in that marriage or they there's some kind of a compromise that they uh, do in that marriage and they still have relationship outside. Uh, uh, that is also coming out because... Uh, uh, they cannot come out with this identity of being from an LGBTQ community. And believe me, I have traveled in the rural parts of Maharashtra for this work. So uh, it's across, it's not like it's a very urban thing. I have seen people in the rural parts of India, uh, you know, recognizing, understanding their sexuality and yet not coming out in the open to say that, yes, we are from the LGBTQ, uh, you know, or that's our sexuality. Now, these becomes the reason for divorce. I understand that because of not coming out in the open, not having the courage to come out in open, it's also violating somebody else's right because that person has married this man or woman with a hope that they are going to uh, have a family. I understand that, but I still don't want to come up with a value judgment because we this it's still a taboo, I would say. People don't talk about it. And hence, it's very difficult for the other partner to even understand where this is coming from or why is, is it that they're not uh, talking about their uh, sexuality. So, uh, and the reason uh, for all this also comes from a lot of things, incompatibility, no dialogues between each other. They don't think it's important to meet before the marriage, before taking that kind of a decision to know each other. All this doesn't become important. It's mostly about what the family says and what the society says. So mm -hmm. one advice that I always give clients coming to me is instead of fighting it out, why don't you just say, okay, if this is not working, this is not working. Just accept that it's not working for whatever reasons. So the one principle I think uh, works uh, when I tell them that, you know, leave, set the bird free. If it comes back to you, it was always yours or it was never yours. So, you know, it just makes life more easy and it's less traumatic rather than fighting in the court, uh, you know, for a person who doesn't want to stay with you and forcing the person to stay because there's a court order that asks you to save that marriage is meaningless is what I uh, think. So yes, but this is a common ground. Same sex relation may not come as a common ground, but having relationship outside marriage does come up as a very common ground. Raga, I'll like, I'll like to come to this show, right? So can you share your personal experience with all of us? Sure, sure. Thanks. Sab. You know, I just want to say that when I watch the trailer, I must yeah, I give kudos to the writer, the director and the actors. I cried. I watched it 10 times and I thought each time I would watch it, I would feel less, but I felt more. I, I must, so it's a, it's a huge thing uh, for us as a community to go through. <coughs> now, the other thing I want to point out, I will share my story very briefly, but before that, I will point out something you said, Tushar, in the introduction. You said, they say that marriage is a legal union between a man and a woman. You know, this is where it starts. The central government, when someone put a petition the other day for same gender marriages, they said it is a union. Marriage is a union between a biological man and a biological woman. We've been fed this. We've been yeah. conditioned to believe this. And this is what I believed as well. So this is the starting point. This is the notion that we live with. And that is why when 20 odd years ago I was married, uh, we immigrated as a family to New Zealand. I had very young twins at that time. And we had a fantastic life, exactly like what Kunal and Sakshi had, magical life. Everything that you can imagine, you know, what does a person want? You want a little family, you want a beautiful house, you want the success, you know, whatever success brings. We had everything. Yet there was a sense of, you know, not being fulfilled. It is because of the social conditioning that I was, I always loved women. I had a relationship with a woman much before my marriage, but that was never an option in India. I mean, look, look at about 20 odd years ago, 25 years ago, or much even before that when I was growing up, we didn't have Google. I didn't even know the word gay. 
imagine my mother or my family or friends knowing that word so we didn't know so you just got married and i did as well and uh, can i tell you that coming my mother basically dragged me out of the closet about 20 odd years ago when i was in new zealand it was very traumatic i had to come out to my husband you know and again i cannot tell you the darkness that it put me through to put the family through you're scared your your my mother i don't know whether you read my story my mother one night because she and understandably so she couldn't understand right we're talking about a long time ago from her generation yeah. she tried to put a knife over me she said i would rather you die <laughs> than we bring shame and scandal to the family and my babies were very little so you know what you do is you just kind of hide you get you struggle i mean i love the way kunal portrayed his character and he went through that it didn't mean he didn't love his family but there is guilt there is fear there is fear of being judged there is fear of being abused i was so badly abused uh, tushar my own community our own community in new zealand spat at me called me lesbians my car glasses were broken windows were broken things happened that you don't want to go talk about so much you know but it happened even to someone like me so you hide eventually you realize that it is not worth it it's not worth putting your family through the pain and the trauma and the turbulence that something like this can cause one part is about you know being separated from your own marriage but we're talking about same gender marriage it's far 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 more difficult so and i liked what sakshi says in the in the film that you know you we, we get the tag of being brave and get an award i don't want to be a brave person i wanted to be normal i want to be like like to get my marriage didn't work i want to be separated and i want to be in a relationship with whoever i want to love i don't want to be married to a male just because society wanted me to marry a male so that is what happens and that is what happened with me as well so i came out at the age of 50 just so that you guys know last year with the encouragement of my ex husband with the encouragement of my partner who i have been with so i have found the preet who's been with me for 14 years we brought up our children together my children are 23 and they oh. have won a lottery with three parents who love them absolutely unconditionally wow amazing that is great amazing. going great going thank you raga i have this is a question that that's going to come to all of you i'll start with raga um, raga tell me one thing i like you're talking about 20 years back and here we are sitting in 2021 how much change do you think as a society like how much of a ecosystem we have we created in society to for lgbtqia plus community to just you know they don't they are so kind of scared to accept themselves even in the closet and what can we do to create a safer ecosystem for everybody to just flourish with the life to sure, share you know the word that you use repeatedly is the word safe and i think that's a very important word for us because uh, like when i came out and my mom found out about my uh, sexual orientation she did not make me feel safe sadly and you think if your own mother cannot accept you unconditionally forget the world the world is not going to accept you it's going to be a very hard place but you know narratives like this just one story at a time what now ekta kapoor has done and all balaji has done breaking out stories like that making it mainstream making it acceptable is when someone like me my next generation maybe will feel safe to say okay if i have this orientation i can be safe enough feel safe enough to come out and nobody is going to judge me nobody is going to abuse me for loving somebody or for just for being who i am and slowly i think narrative stories are changing my story is also getting made into a film soon and uh, so these are narratives that change every day allies we need people like like all of you sitting here you know playing the characters that are not comfortable <coughs> but hey different so i want to normal. come to you next and i uh, like i binge watch couple of days back and i reached out to couple of my filmmaker friends and i asked them have they watched it and so many of them they replied yes and we love it and it's just amazing so a lot of closeted gay people in india look up to characters like yours and manals and it is very empowering for them in their closet to maybe come out you know some day so that comes with a responsibility to play a character like that tell me what was the conscious or uh, unconscious decisions that went in playing the character thinking that it's it could be you know uh, 
just a hope for a lot of people out there who are closeted. Well, you know, I uh, I obviously didn't want to play Kunal as some sort of cliched gay character, which you know has been portrayed in Indian cinema for years, etc. Which has done, I think, a lot of damage to the movement. Uh, yeah. So, uh, uh, so I wanted to play him like a normal person who has uh, whose sort of sexual orientation is an issue in his life, and um, what I would sort of hope that this character and the story sort of, uh, uh, sort of uh, gives out in terms of a message to anybody who's in a similar situation. And actually a lot of people have been writing to me uh, on Instagram over the last three, four days. It's just that, that, you know, it's a, yes, uh, uh, this character Kunal was, uh, you know, it was a more privileged life. Yeah. And the, the, you know, uh, those sort of people tend to be more insulated from social scrutiny in a sense, right? They're freer to live the lives of their own. And I think to an extent, it's easier for them to, to come out. And um, we were doing an interview yesterday where, with somebody who was who lives in a village in Himachal somewhere. And, you know, he's living two hours away from his family. He's just come out. It's not so easy. It's not so easy when you're living in a tiny village where there's 30 people around you who, uh, for, for whom, A, this is a very uh, outlandish concept. Uh, even if they've sort of heard of it, they know that there are people who've lived like their entire lives like this, but they've kept it buried. So I think it's just that sort of inner will and courage to basically take that first step. And then, you know, one hopes that your sort of the, the word safe was used that, that your sort of inner circle gives you that sense of freedom to take the following steps. Premani, I'll come to you next. Uh, tell me one thing. Uh, what are your thoughts about marriage? Um, and like, what are your thoughts? I'm very curious to know because. What are my thoughts about marriage? Yeah. Like, as it was mentioned that it's a, you know, legal union. And so what do you like from uh, deriving from I was just about your... to say, I think it's just a legal uh, writing on paper. That is, if you're going for a court marriage kind of a thing, it's just a legal thing where, you know, you're pleasing the society that uh, you're telling the society that, okay, look, I've married this person, be it a man or a woman, whoever you're getting married to. Um, but apart from that, I think given the uh, society today, I think most of them, they're just, you know, happy with the live-in relationship. And um, I think that's what, they're so forward today that I know a lot of people who, in fact, my uh, own cousin sister she was in a live-in relationship much before she got married to you know her partner uh, now her husband uh, so they're so forward you know they want to live in with the person and see whether you know how the compatibility is and you know today as rightly as what Rama ma'am said I think compatibility is uh, you know probably the key to the whole thing and talking it out and just to see how um you know, how you gel along with the person and how comfortable you are with the person. So, um, as far as I know, you know, a lot of people are are in a living relationship, but yes, because of the pressures of the family and, uh, you know, what the society will think if a man and a woman are living together or a man and a man or a woman and a woman are living together. Um, so, I think it's, it's a legal thing to say, look, hey, we are in a relationship sort of thing, but well, it's important. If it is important, it is important. I'm not. I'm nobody to uh, contradict that. Saying no, 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 it's not important kind of thing. So, it's it's actually a 50-50 thing for me. Mina, tell me one thing. And all of us, we keep hearing about you know over social media and newspaper hate crimes. Mm -hmm. A lot of hate crimes happen, um, you know, uh, with people from the community. And your show has also somehow put light on a hate crime. What are your thoughts about that? I mean, it's horrible. The fact that it happens and exists in our society, it's just very sad. Um, I mean, um, hasn't happened with, um, you know, uh, friends I know, people I know. But again, it's been pretty rough at home for them. So again, it is um, just the mindset and just the, you know, um, the conditioning that the fact that it still happens and people can have so much hate towards someone is just, I mean, it's just sad. It's just the lack of, you know, 
people being informed and spoken to and you know um, it's like we'll talk we'll make them understand so it just you know the talk needs to happen for it to happen you know amongst the family parents talking to their kids so it's it starts on that level you know um so yes it's outright wrong and just sad i mean i i'd like to add there and say that you know hate crime is still uh, it's something very big i, I have uh, friends in bombay who are a gay couple and they keep telling me that yaar between uh, seepage and homophobia you can never get a house in <laughs> you can never get an apartment in bombay so i think hate crime to tabhi you know is physical violence yeah. it starts at a much it starts at a very different level and um, something as simple as getting an apartment to live in in bombay is an issue because uh, these are two guys who are living together and uh, you know the society uh, and and i mean the the, mm-hmm. the the housing society has an issue with that raga and uh, ramat uh, this is like generalized question but uh, i would like to start with you to tell me one thing um like a lot of problem is rooted because we have not created much awareness there are really good stories like on good stories films i mean they have done a phenomenal job but what as the society can we do to create that awareness because i personally uh, recently made a film on the on the issue and i did a lot of research and when you go in villages and when you talk to people they do not under, under, understand this concept and i mean it's so hard to just to create a little bit of space for them to have a even dialogue uh to shy there are many ways like i said what he, what uh, old balaji did with this his story is one way right and i like the fact that the characters were not basically ridiculed or made it made caricaturish as they used to do in the old cinema it, it's normal like kunal and brunal and sakshi i mean sorry not sakshi not that she's she was gay in the uh, series but you know it's just a normal person and how we make change is by making sure that there are allies there are people like us who talk about it there are stories which are mainstream there are books that are written which are regular books that people read it we should uh, watch a film some day and just have a character who's gay who just happens to be a brother or a husband or it doesn't matter you know these are every day we make changes when when i'll give you my example as a heterosexual you know when i was married to a man my life was completely different to when i was married to uh, when i'm with a woman i'm not married to her it's completely different i never had to you know be invited to a wedding or something people just invited me with my husband abhi to people think they it's like not possible when i went for school admissions for, for my children it's an, it's understood that i put my husband's name abhi imagine putting nicolas name in it so these are mortgage i can't i could buy a house with my ex husband i couldn't buy a, a house i cannot buy a mortgage or get a mortgage in india these are basic things in a heteronormative society we take for granted you cannot take for granted in a homosexual sadly homosexual relationship what i took for granted there i was not so we have to create a society which makes us mainstream and each one of us responsible we do something called othering as we know we always say usne ye kaha usne wo kaha us society is not no this society is this we are the society and we have to build that society together and rama what about you yeah uh, i agree with what uh, raga said uh, we have to work a lot to create that awareness because uh, people still don't want to accept it uh, i i want to say two things uh, you know coming from a legal background uh, uh, saurabh Uh, kapal's name was suggested for judgeship for the uh, you know delhi high court and uh, he didn't get a confirmation when he came out in the open saying that uh, you know he is a gay uh, but look at the contrast in just today's newspapers we read a news saying that one of the judges of the madras high court has he said that to. you know when there's a complaint yeah. coming of two girls uh, you know who ran away and the parents complaining he said that i want to understand about homosexuality now uh, uh, especially where judges come and lawyers uh, you know cr- come from this whole attitude of, attitude of no all we know everything we don't need to learn anything uh, you know for a judge of a high court to say uh, 
uh, who he goes to is not important. I mean, the first question that hit me was, why a psychologist, you know, uh, there would be so many other people he could go to, but that's okay. But the fact that, you know, he came with this whole attitude of saying, I need to know about this. I need to go to someone, someone else, some other experts. You know, I think how we also show our solidarity when there are uh, uh, probably, you know, uh, 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 you know, kind of morchas happening or when uh, uh, they come out in the open and uh, they want to talk about the issue, how we show our solidarity and how we are with them is equally uh, important. And I think no, being non-judgmental <laughs> is the most important thing. Uh, so I keep telling them, I, I have a lot of students coming for internship, right? And when I speak of all these issues that are otherwise not discussed in the syllabus, I keep telling them heterosexuality is as normal as homosexuality. So let's focus, you know, like homosexuality is normal. Why do we say it is abnormal? But that's something that we need to, uh, uh, you know, kind of change is what I think. And talking about it and uh, creating that awareness and, uh, having those dialogues with different stakeholders uh, is important because we don't have those kind of supporting laws. We don't have those kind of supporting policies. And I completely agree with Raga that what we take for granted in a heterosexual relationship in a marriage cannot be taken for granted in a homosexual relationship. And that's the saddest part. So, Shar, uh, may I add to this? May I, yes. sorry, add to this? You know, yes. you talked about 2021 and kind of correlates to what just uh, Rama ma'am just said. You know, we're talking about even today, we're talking about conversion therapy. Do you know what conversion therapy is? Even today in 2021, Sad. UK, New Zealand, we still believe that homosexuality is a mental illness. Yeah. And therefore, it can be cured by some religious uh, you know, conversion or by a medical conversion. To me, that is shameful. That has to move. And also, I think I personally am so sorry to interject. So but I also, I, I also think that... <coughs> like people are so adamant that they just don't want to have dialogue just have the dialogue and decide for yourself but some of the people they are not even open to have a dialogue Minal, uh premani i'm gonna come to you next but Minal, tell me one thing do you think his story will help improving the situation uh see the thing is it doesn't happen overnight like a series or a movie won't do it but at least it it just uh people watch it a lot of families watch it at least the awareness you know people at least feel they should talk to their kids about it after you know watching something like this just an awareness i think and and yeah uh, we're fortunate that you know something like an alt has so much followers and you know they have followers in every city yeah. so it's great it's reaching places and where people can see and you know reflect and understand um and like have a have a discussion and just again normalize it i hate to say it normalize it also but yes just to make it normal just to um yeah, just to evolve their thinking a little bit. Yeah. No, I also think the more we talk about it, it's like it's also about subconscious. The the things that we keep hearing about, they at like after some time become normal. And I personally think the more we'll tell these stories, the more we'll talk about it, it somehow will get in everybody's subconscious and becomes normal. Uh, Premani, tell me one thing. When one cheats in marriage, what should be the consequences as per you? Like forgiveness or separation or Why kind of... Why do you keep asking me only these kind of questions? <laughs> I don't understand. I'm not married. <laughs> well, that was in the script. I, did, I didn't use that. It was the script. Since friends, you are happily married, I was like, I'm not this. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I think Ramama would be a better person to answer that. Let's... let's Why let's do you well, as per the script says, <laughs> I've, I've been told that you're happily married. I was like, okay, that's wonderful. So, Look, okay, I'm let's just, deflect this too. I'm extremely new to all this concept of marriage also myself. But um, see, as uh, what, you know, um, the character, I mean, what Sakshi has said in um, the series that uh, marriage may, what is the most important thing? It's trust. And if that itself was not there, then, you know, the whole building of marriage collapses. Um, so I feel if you have the trust and if you have the confidence that even if, you know, your partner is cheating and whatever, I think you should just own up and say, look, hey, I've done this and uh, I'm really sorry about it. Then obviously, then after that, you know, have a mature conversation. I mean, I would do that if I have done something like this. I would, you know, talk to my husband saying, look, I'm sorry, but I just got carried away or whatever. And I, I did it. Yeah. Um, 
well the repercussion after that would be obviously between the two of us but i think you should basic thing is communication and trust so if it is well if it's broken i think ma'am is well you got rama ma'am here so i think she'll be a better person to say what is the punishment or whatever is the well, thing but rama, i feel, I yeah I have uh, one more question for you. Tell me one thing. What do you think India? Don't ask me or... anything about marriage again. I will not. <laughs> Let me see if it is in the script. I will not. There is one more question. I'm not going to ask that. <laughs> Otherwise, I will <laughs> be in trouble. But Rama, ma'am, tell me one thing. What do you think that India will take longer to accept same-sex marriages despite of legalization now? Yes, uh, I think so. Uh, it shouldn't actually uh, when we have act, when when they decriminalize se same sex marriage. Of course, it was a long, long, long battle even to do that in the judiciary. Uh, right, more than twenty five years we lost in just recognizing, uh, you know, a law that was made in eighteen sixty. Uh, to say that you know we need to decriminalize same sex relationships so i think in a way yes uh, by the way we are going in terms of making policy that are more people oriented uh, inclusive i would say it's a long way to uh, go uh, having said that it it must happen now i mean the world is changing and uh, we need to be a part of that uh, uh, change we can't be so parochial in our ideas and uh, thoughts and what we think is our beliefs uh, uh, you know so i think we need to make that uh, change because there are uh, so many things right we could look at marriage as a piece of paper but uh, i cannot say that as a person coming from a law background it does have legal rights uh, simple things like whether you can uh, uh, you know get a loan uh, whether you can adopt children Uh, uh you know uh, all these matters and when you're not recognized legally as a legal heir because you're not married there are so many legal implications uh, to this so i think it's high time that we recognize uh, this because right now people are in a living relationship but if they want to marry and if they believe in the institution of marriage why are we depriving yeah, them of yeah. that i i i really want to add something here like i once uh, when i was doing research i once wrote a quote and it just free flow and it's like be accepting instead of expecting but moving on uh um uh, trimani my next marriage question for you is <laughs> but no next next question is for minal and uh, satdeep tell me uh, do you guys believe in marriages and how different are your characters from your personalities oh, i mean uh, at a personal level i would say to each his own uh, i mean you find someone who you compatible with you you know you want to spend the rest of your life with Uh, and then you get into the sort of legalese of you know whether you want to have children if you want to have children you know you know do you think uh, you know succession and property and you know all of that happens so i think to each his own but um, I i'll speak here for the character that i played but in that he he's clearly who somebody who um who hid the real part of him for a very very long time because i think at some point uh, he had uh, found himself in the institution of marriage uh, maybe he didn't want to but he wasn't sure of what he was inside but once he found himself in there it took him a really really long time to you know to come to terms with who he really was and to that extent i think um, it, it's it's a bond i feel between two people which is more important than the than the institution and in the case of his story i think uh, kunal and sachi do have that bond and um, i i think uh, th there's a reason why the story plays out the way it does because even uh, and there is dialogue to that effect that you know he says that uh, what i have with preet is is love but what i have with you is love too and the fact that i may love preet but uh, i when i pray before i go to sleep at night it's it's you and my children that are in my prayers so you know it's there is that bond and uh, and i just feel that uh, yes uh, without that bond uh, you know there is there is no marriage uh, you know a marriage is just a thappa that you put on something but that that bond is what's required and uh, that's the thing that sort of uh, people should aspire to achieve in their relationships what about you mrinal <clears throat> i i feel i see i meet a lot of young people who do not want to get married you know so somewhere it is a dying <laughs> concept um just the fact that they realize they do have an option you know 
again as as we were talking about conditioning people are conditioned to think that they have to get married i mean pata nahi wo kab tak they can not be married and they can sustain that and how you know uh, when they eventually have to but at least like people in mid 30s are still you know people who don't want to get married and you know they are in relationships and they are they have been in relationships or you know they just don't want to get married and see how their relationship goes where it goes but marriage is something they do not want to do and they're pretty clear about that so yeah um somewhere it's 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 dying i think and and preet ke sath bhi i think that's what happened uh, i don't know if you guys have seen the entire series yeah. he is definitely in love he definitely who wants a partner is definitely someone who needs to give love you know uh, to have someone he can you know unconditionally love but then again he gets cold feet when he uh, is about to get married again um, he's also in the same time and space <clears throat> as the people i'm talking about as the friends i'm talking about you know that um, they're okay to be with people they okay to live with people they okay to even just have a steady invested relationship but marriage somewhere um is just like alarm bells for them so uh, that's that's something that's exactly what in fact happens with preet you know um Uh, which you do not expect also yeah. so yeah that's the situation from where i see before i conclude this i would uh, like to just it's a generalized thing i would like to throw it out there as a filmmaker myself one thing i really loved is how uh, <coughs> you know the creators have treated uh, just bullying being bullied like it doesn't have to start in school it doesn't have to start in market football or, or basketball ground it most of the time it starts at home and i really like how the father is almost indirectly or directly bullying his son to man up and how uh, you know a, an elder brother is bullying his younger brother that he's he could be gay so what are your thoughts uh, about that Rama, can i take that can yeah, i take yeah, that yeah yeah go you ahead know, so i think uh, the series also showed something very interesting they they had this home the ecosystem they created was a home environment the school environment and outside yeah. and all three are very important and th- that is a social construct for all of us right so at home even if you give like in in the case of the main protagonist they, they gave a safe home there was no kind of bullying everything was accepted you know uh, yet the child was uh, bullied or bullied somebody else outside the home so what we are we are doing as a society is if we start valuing these three things within our own environment and make it in closer as rama was saying i think that itself will change the way we uh, the change the narrative you know and i can i add because i can't help it because you asked uh, priya mani about no, go ahead, marriage go ahead. i'm going to go uh, to her next with another marriage that the new generation things the millennials is quite different to the way i think as well because i have been married and i am by choice not married but i feel that marriage is important in this con- current social construct because of the legalities involved my partner was in hospital i couldn't sign any papers couldn't give permission to the doctor because my on paper i am not recognized yeah. so those are little important things that we have to remember it's an entitlement marriage should be a choice the lgbt community you know we don't have a choice we are just told you cannot marry whether you love somebody or that is when this narrative will change and we will not have these conversations anymore no more series sorry but no i want to like congratulate uh, you guys you guys have done phenomenal job i, I mean i from personal uh, experience if i binge watch something in one night that's something that has like i can it's just amazing so congratulations to you guys congratulations to alt balaji for bringing uh, such amazing stories and creating such a like it's i know it's you know it's one step at a time but you guys have literally taken one step but it's a big step the way it has been created the way how sensitively you guys have um, you know acted told stories congratulations to creators are there any parting thoughts that any of you want to uh, maybe add yes go ahead Can i say please yes. closets are for clothes not yes. to hide your truth come out i'm going to i'm going to make a t-shirt of that i'm going to make a t-shirt yeah. of where or and to all of us royal closets of a clothes not to hide your truth very okay. 
Any, I completely agree on that. Primani, any, any thoughts? No, I completely agree with what uh, Raga just said. Because it's uh, meant for only clothes. And I think the moment you accept yourself, you accept who you are, and you just have the confidence, just come out and say, look, I'm so much. Any parting thoughts? Yeah, I think we uh, should have that uh, space for, you know, um, individuality. And if one uh, has a se uh, sexuality uh, preference, then that is it. We need to respect that. We need to accept that without being non-judgmental. I think unless we do that as a society, we will not survive. So we need that inclusiveness, uh, you know, for all of us to be there together and respect uh, uh, each other. Definitely that's important. So Pradeep? <laughs> I mean, there, there are lyrics from a song I used to listen to in my teens, uh, which go uh, free your mind and the rest will follow. And I think uh, th those are really important words if you really look at the meaning and uh, they have the power to change your heart. Yes, change our thoughts and, you know, just uh, not let anybody around you suffer and, you know, just uh, help them come out and just have a better environment around for people to just uh, be themselves. I think basically just we want what we all want to say is live and let live. Yeah, I mean, that's the motto, right? Uh, that's yeah. just uh, what I personally think. It's like our lives is like just a little spark of a shooting star. So why, when we are alive for this very short moment, why not just, just spread love, spread positivity and let everybody else say, like, I don't know who said this quote. Somebody in the US said this quote when, uh, quote, when they were like, trying to legalize same-sex marriage uh, state-wise, somebody said that if uh, same-sex, like if the gay marriage is legalized, it doesn't mean that all the straight people have to go and get married to gay people. True. It's like, if you are giving somebody else right, it doesn't take your right, away, right, right? right. Yeah, yeah. Correct. Uh, just, I mean, just share and care, I guess. But thank you so much, guys, for uh, being on this panel. I have like five more questions that I want to ask Primani for. No. But thank you so much, guys, for joining in. I want to thank everybody who's tuned, who, who's watching us on uh, Facebook Live. I want to congratulate uh, Alt Balaji for bringing so many phenomenal stories out and just creating a space for conversation and just, you know, kind of how you pinch in a big balloon. So just pinching that kind of mentality, the people who don't want to have that conversation. I, I, I have a friend, he told me a couple of days back that his parents saw uh, his story with his 15 year old younger brother. And that is kind of influence and awareness you guys have been creating. So congratulations on that and cannot wait to see many more seasons of it. I'll talk to you soon. Have a good rest of your day. Stay safe, guys. Bye. Thank Take you. Care. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.